Uh, Mr. Brendan, the answer to your question was uh, our prophet. He said that uh, he said to one of his companions that there will come a day when uh, Islam, the Muslims, they become the scum of the sea, the froth on the top of the ocean. It means they have no significance. So why will this happen? Because uh, they will lose, they will lose their uh, their courage and their love for the truth. So that's what you're seeing now. That uh, is, Muslims have. Uh, no direction, no backbone. They don't have any willpower to stand up to this oppression. Yeah. That's that's what Muslims it is. warned me. They warned me before I went overseas, Brendan. You have a highly romanticized view of Islam, man. Yeah. The prophets dead. The man, they're all dead now. It was sold out as everyone else. And I thought, well, you know, I think you're being a little bit negative. And but that's what I found. I just found yeah. everybody seems disorganized, and oh, that's obviously the plan. Um, to keep things as disorganized uh, as possible. So we as individuals just sort of clamor around with no direction. That could be fixed, but um, I'm not sure what's going on at the moment. I've, I've bent over backwards. I've performed miracles. I've done amazing stuff and you wouldn't even know about it. You wouldn't even know about it. It's just swamped. It's suppressed. Um, Patrick Berge says that the man who exposed a lot of things to do with IIA, interactive internet activities, where they're just running whole websites, whole YouTube channels, whole all social media. They've got all their people, tens of thousands of employees pretending to be organic, spontaneous, ordinary people seeking the truth. And it's just total contrived, totally controlled, and everyone seems to have forgotten this. And countering it is so difficult. Well, we're trying to counter it now in this conversation, and who knows where this may lead in 10 years. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Brendan, it's like, uh, going back to Chabad Lubovic, it's like uh, they they do a very good job because uh, their their beliefs, their, they play on the geopolitical chessboard, but they play according to their interpretation of the Talmud and other uh, rabbinical books, you know, so it's, it's, all, it's, it's a religious conspiracy, but it's played on the geopolitical chessboard. And uh, the Muslims, that's what they're missing. They... They don't look. They don't even look at one. They cannot even make that connection because, uh, me as a young guy, I'm telling um, everyone that don't you see your religion has the solutions. It, it it does not tell you to pray, pray and be busy with your fasting. It tells you to fight the evil. So like to fight the evil, you have to see like the geopolitical chessboard. You have to see your enemy. Why why are they doing what they're doing? But uh, I don't see enough people. You know. Uh, being exposed to this kind of information, it really makes me angry, honestly. Yeah. I understand. I mean, I look, I have a great deal of sympathy for Muslims in general. You're insulted day and night. The Prophet's insulted day and night. If you're from the Middle East, you've watched, you know, my friend Louis told me the heartbreak he felt as his country was not just destroyed and the loss of life and the trauma. It was humiliating. They were totally humiliated. And you see Syria and you see um, uh, Libya. You see all these countries going under. And I think Islam in general and Arabs and, and the other members of the community around the world are demoralized. They can't get organized. Their leadership is sold out. Their media is just tippy-toeing around. I understand there are, there are complications when you're at that level. It's not easy to run a little YouTube channel. Or it is easy to run, but it's a bit harder when you're bigger. I do thank Al Mayadeen yeah. and that excellent presenter who really did her homework on that interview yeah, yeah. Um, for that opportunity. I am grateful for that. And I was probably got a bit angry when I was in Beirut because I was like, when's it coming out, please? I've been waiting years. Um, but that was a really good interview. And I do think there are changes taking place. But um, what we see now is uh, accelerating of greater Israel and the merging of UAE. You'll see the merging of Saudi, Jordan, yeah. Lebanon and all the rest slowly economically merged first. And then eventually, in 10 plus years, depending on how many crises they can produce, uh, how much pushback there is from perhaps the US military and others, um, you'll see a merging of greater Israel and the transfer of the US high technology sector. That's the goal, to make greater Israel. And for a lot of uh, the, the Middle East population, they're so exhausted. As people in Beirut say, Brennan, we're exhausted. And look at Syria, look at Iraq, everybody is exhausted. And they're ready to take it. Okay, UN, bring us a, we don't care, 5G surveillance, we'll take it. Just let our kids go to school, yeah. let us eat three times a day, and just leave us alone, and they're going to submit. Very that, There's no, yeah, they, they, they've, they've been worn out completely. Well, uh, didn't the founder of Zionism say that uh, they're, uh, the, the, the greater Israel it runs from the river Nile to the river Euphrates? So what do you think will happen to Egypt?
<laughs> yeah, from the east bank of the Nile to the west bank yeah. of the Euphrates. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, Egypt's already started. Egypt is a big participant in the UN Habitat Smart Cities program now. Uh, the government realizes they have a massive population in Egypt yeah. with technology. The job rates are going to be low. I mean, there are problems. I'm all for UN Habitat Smart Cities as long as we have some say and some control and understand what is being put in place. It has a good side. And it also has a very dangerous bad side. And we're not having that conversation. We're being told that we're going to die from carbon dioxide, uh, we're going to weather warfare's going on, political warfare's going on. We can't sit down and have that conversation. And if, unless we can only do, we've only got to let God put the Holy Spirit across the earth. And as you and I and others, as Dr. Oz was motivated by the Holy Spirit, we're now having a conversation. This little conversation could turn into something more. The bottom line is, even if we feel frustrated, and we do and i know muslims are very frustrated and i know um pe people in general are very frustrated but everyone is doing their little bit it would be better if we could get focused it's like the old german uh technique of blitzkrieg where you make a yeah. fist and you focus very narrowly on a point and i've said if we can just focus on technology transfer educating the american establishment the pentagon that this chinese communist party conspiracy is an israeli conspiracy israel opened the doors for the chinese communist party infiltration of the united states and the opportunity to get this narrative in there is here for us and god willing um over time, these little changes and with the blessings of the Holy Spirit spreading across the land, we're going to find more and more people in positions of power and influence uh, affected by this narrative. And things are happening quietly behind the scenes. But look, I agree. I have very bad days some days. Yeah. I've just gone through a very down period where I felt, God, I've wasted my life for nothing. Nothing seems to work. But then you wake up and you're ready to go again. You pray. You do what you need to do. All we can do is keep fighting. Whatever the, Forget about the outcome. Just fight. God's watching. God is watching us. We need fruits, like you said. You pray five. It's easy to pray five times a day. It's easy to do Ramadan. These are easy things. I mean, well, actually, it's not. Ramadan's down hard. But um, the point is, uh, these things are structured and they're easy, and that makes you feel better. What's harder is to fight and make a sacrifice economically or a sacrifice of time or to get yourself out of an old routine. I don't know about you, but I feel, and prob probably you'll agree, I think God wants less praying five times a day, more love, compassion, exactly. and more fighting that's, of injustice. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's what religion is. It's to forbid evil, enjoy good, and love your neighbor. That's, that's it. How easy is that? How easy is that? But when you, you know, the law of the land shall be written unto our hearts. That's, that's the coming age where... We don't, God, you know, as God said to the Israelites all those years ago, I don't want any more burnt offerings. I want a repentant heart. I want justice. I want compassion and mercy. These are the things that God's love. And it's very easy. You know, I've met Muslims, Christians, and Jews. Yeah, they do all the rituals, but they're horrible people. Yes. Is it? <laughs> well, actually, most of them are. Most religious people are like this nowadays. And uh, if you look at an incident from uh, Isa a.s. life, Jesus, he didn't he have a confrontation with the Pharisees and Sadducees? And the Pharisees and Sadducees, those were legalists. They turned religion from yeah. something as simple as love your neighbor, enjoy good, forbid evil, to something very ritualistic. And you don't, you don't think, you just do. It's like, uh, so he was telling them, like, you are of your father who is Satan. So you are killers. You kill. Because that is what it leads to. Like, if you're engaged in blind ritual, you have no sympathy, no heart, no no mission, and you just live your life to what they say, what they do. You don't do anything. Exactly. And this is the great crime that goes on, a Luciferian pride, Pharisaism, where the ego is so scared. Yeah. It's scared of God, so it resorts to ritual to protect itself. Yeah. And if I just like an obsessive compulsive mental disorder, exactly. if, you, if you do the cleaning rituals of Orthodox Judaism, if I pray five times a day, if I go to church and sing and put my hands in the air, uh, that somehow everything's okay. What's harder is to let God speak in your heart. When I got up that morning on, on May the 2nd, 2009 and attended that Friends of Palestine rally, yeah. you know, I didn't want to go. I was going to yeah. stay in bed. But someone said, no, you've got to go. Yeah. We've, got, we've got to understand that, that being willing to sacrifice, um, being careful not to be manipulated. I mean, I do like the speech Dr. Mahathir Muhammad gave many years ago, 2003, where he said Muslims have got to start thinking. But this applies to all of us. Stop, stop reacting and start thinking. 
And this is what we have we have got to begin. I hoped Malaysia was going to be it, but clearly Malaysia, I was treated very well by the Royal Malaysian Police and others. I was befriended there by some very interesting uh, groups who were clearly, clearly uh, on the side of good. Unfortunately, things didn't work out. But as Matthias said, man, they're just going to destroy our economy. And until ordinary people can understand and educate people like the Royal Malaysian Police, like the American FBI, like the Australian Federal Police, I promise you, I met some of these people. They're onto it. The Australian Federal Police, after I don't particularly like former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd, he's an arch globalist, but he threw out the Israeli ambassador. No country has ever thrown out an Israeli ambassador, as far as I know. And then the Australian Federal Police absolutely gave it to Israel. And I have friends right now who sit with the retired Australian Federal Police and they despise Israel as a national security risk and as a bully and a thug. There are um, military people including special forces retired that i know that know what israel is so it's slowly spreading out there and i know for the average muslim you're not seeing that but i promise you it is happening we wish it would happen faster but the changes are happening that's why you see these huge changes taking place in the middle east they're desperately moving as fast as they can the seeds are being planted yeah. hopefully we can be we can see it's all we can do is plant these seeds and just do what we can. Just do what we can. God's watching. It's not about winning. It's about how you behave under this pressure. That's it. It's about you. How, how are you going to respond? Forget about winning. It's respond and try and uh, fight all the way down, no matter what happens. Mr. Brenda, I will ask you a couple more questions and then I'll let you go to your work, right? Is that fine? Yeah, sure. 